Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Theological Leftover for this week. We are continuing to talk about reconciliation because reconciliation is something that needs to continue to be talked about, and that's why we're doing it. Lots of verses we've been looking at. I don't know how many. I've lost count. The scriptures have a lot to say about our relationships with one another and how they shouldn't be treated as accidents, but they should be treated as as gifts. God has joined us together, especially as brothers and sisters in Christ, and these are worth preserving. So we want to do more than just resolve conflict. The resolution isn't the thing really that's at the center of what we want to do. We want to reconcile because our brother and sister in Christ is who is at the center. We want the relationship that is being threatened, that maybe has has been broken, to be restored. And that can happen because Christ has died for our sins and he has risen from the dead and he gives us the gift of forgiveness. Forgiveness between me and my Father in heaven. Forgiveness that I can share with you, my brother or sister in Christ. This is what we have been talking about. Just look at a passage at a time through the scriptures. We're in the New Testament. And today we've got four passages left. We're going to look at 1 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 8, if you want to look it up, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. But before I read it, let's begin with a prayer. We pray, God of love, through your Son, you have commanded us to love one another. By the guidance of your word and spirit, deliver us from impenitence and teach us the truth that we might share our, confess our sins, receive your forgiveness and be reconciled to one another. We pray this through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. All right. 1 Timothy 2.8 is what we are looking at. And it's just this one verse. It has to do with our life together as Christians, especially in the context of the divine service, God coming to us through his word and sacrament. And, and so it's the worship service that we're talking about, and there's lots of stuff here, some of it clear, some of it has been reason for controversy. I just want to read one verse, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 8. Timothy writes, or pardon me, Paul writes to Timothy, I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Seems pretty straightforward. Don't quarrel. Don't reside in anger. Don't dwell in anger. Instead, do what? Lift up your hands in prayer. Pray. Right? So instead of this, this, or this, or or this, or whatever. I I, I mean the posture kind of matters here, I guess, because it does point to um, the one that we are praying to. It points to the one in whom, uh, the one, the one in whom our hope rests. Right. So if we have division between us, um, prayer, <laughs> you know, turning to God, to, calling out to, to the Son, who has who's reconciled us with the Father. If He can reconcile this poor miserable sinner with the holy and powerful God Almighty, then then He can reconcile you. And I so so it just makes sense, right? Lifting our hands in prayer rather than the anger or the quarreling. Um, there's that. Um, it doesn't mean you have to do this and and worship or wave or hold up your light or any of that stuff. It it it, it doesn't mean that, okay? Um, but uh, there are a couple things I, I'm not sure if I know exactly. Um, I think this can be applied to a lot of people, but I. It, Pretty sure verse 8 is when it says, I desire that in every place the men should pray. I think this is especially talking not just about all men. It's just like it's not talking about um, prayer in every place. I mean, it it says in every place, but, but it doesn't necessarily mean here um, in all the homes and in your businesses. It, it, it's, it's not saying that. That's a good thing to do. Pray without ceasing. Paul says that. But in this case, it's it's talking about all these different places, these every places that he talks about are the congregations, right? So congregation in Galatia, congregation in, 
in uh, Corinth, a congregation in Rome, a congregation in Jerusalem, a congregation in Evansville, Indiana. These are the every places, right? Wherever God's people have been intentionally gathered together by the mercy of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit working through the word, wherever that life together exists, prayer needs to be there, right? And I don't think it's just talking to generically all the men in the congregation, even though, again, it is good for all the men and women and children to pray. Um, but it's talking about worship. This is in the context of worship. So the men in all these different places that it's talking about are the overseers or the elders or the pastors. So first and foremost, again, I'm not saying y'all can't apply this, but first and foremost, this is a message to pastors. This is Paul speaking to Pastor Timothy, right? I desire then that in every place, the men, the overseers, the elders, the pastors should pray. Lifting holy hands without anger are quarreling. This is an essential act of the pastor. Not to be quarreling, not to be prone to anger or, or dwelling in anger, but instead praying, specifically praying in regard to reconciliation. Reconciliation. As a pastor, I'll share my example, um, and I'm sure this is true of most pastors, but I think it's true of everybody that's listening. And again, apply this, please. It's, you don't have to be a pastor to apply this. Um, but as a pastor, I can tell you how, how easy it is to to see conflict between people in the congregation and just to roll up sleeves and to jump in and try to, to resolve the conflict. Um, and the pastor has a role in that, most certainly. But, but it's amazing how often we forget that prayer is an important part of that role, an essential part, and, and really the first part, um, because it is God who brings about reconciliation. It's just like everything else. What good thing would exist without God initiating and preserving right your faith no you'd have no faith it's a gift from god and it's he that sustains it how about more even fundamental than that your life no you'd have no life if it hadn't been for god who created you and sustains you it's the same with this it is god who has gathered us together it's not an accident that we have this life together in our congregations and it's not it's not by accident that it stays together it's by the power of god right and so we pray so we constantly are talking about this, all these good things we have. We talk about preserving it in, by praying and by being in God's word and by receiving the gifts that God promises to give us in his sacraments. Because this is where God is at. This is where God is, is at and doing these things, this, this work of, of preserving, right? And so where there is conflict and, and where, where um, reconciliation needs to be taking place, Prayer is an essential part of that. I, I think it's as simple as that. And 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 just one step further, pastors need to be leading by example in terms of dealing with their anger, not quarreling, and making prayer front and center and first when it comes to this important work of, of sustaining our life together. That's it. I think that's it. Read it. See what you think. Take a look at the context, even though it'll probably raise more questions than it will provide answers. But read it. It's it's First Timothy chapter 2. Again, verse 8. I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Right? With God's, by God's grace, with God's help, brothers and sisters in Concordia, that's what I'll try to do for you. Fathers, I would encourage you, this is, this is what you were called to do in your homes as well. Brothers and sisters in Christ, your relationships with one another are a great gift. Preserve them in part by praying to God about these relationships, the ones you love and the ones that maybe just take a lot of work. Pray for all of them because they are all a blessing to our fellowship and our life together. God bless you all. We'll be back next week with one more. We, we have three more. So, so we are getting down to the wire. We're getting near the end of...
at least the verses we're looking at on reconciliation. Hope you will join us next week. Even more than that, I hope that we'll see you in worship this Sunday. Bible class at 9 o'clock, worship at 1030. We are in a great season, by the way. We are doing the one-year lectionary, which means we had transfiguration early. Right? We, we had it last week, and Lent is not still for a couple of weeks. So we have three Sundays before we have our 40 days where we focus on that somber season where we reflect on our sin and our mortality. Before we get to that, we have three weeks where we focus on one thing, grace, grace. And we're starting that this week. Um, in fact, you can see I already have a couple of reminders for myself on the board back there. Um, if you couldn't read it, can you read it? Well, if you can't, or even if you can and it excites you and you're like, oh, I want to hear about that Sunday, 1030. That's when we're talking about it. Hope to see you there. Take care, everybody.